Shalom. I want to start by giving all the praise and glory and honor to Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashim, Raul Chakwadash. Dev honors to my teachers, the elder apostles of the great millstone who were well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And um, in this uh, lesson, this video, I kind of wanted to um, do a response to this commentary, which um, this was by uh, David Guzik. All right, and um, you know, he's known for him a, a series of uh, commentaries that he does on the scriptures. And there's, you know, if you been, you know, watching his works, you'll know that, you know, certain things that he does go off on and there's things that he actually gets right, you know, he's on point with. And uh, this particular commentary is um pretty much on point and it uh, actually uh, agrees with our understanding, our breakdown of Romans, the 13th chapter, you know, the first uh, few verses, you know, where it talks about being subject unto the higher powers, you know, and um, previously I, I did a lesson you know, going into this topic, you know, based on a, a, a comment where, you know, there was a brother that, you know, disagrees with our understanding of uh, the breakdown. All right. So, um, you know, I just want to go into the commentary because, you know, even Esau can see it. And, uh, you know, Esau, one thing about him is he actually studies, man. He He, he does. He puts in the work. You know, now he doesn't get, he doesn't got everything right, you know, because as it is written, you know, the Lord will um, do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So there's certain things that Esau can try to guess or, or surmise about, but, you know, he can't really uh, get it. But this right here, you know, this is, you know, pretty, you know, easy to understand. All right. And it also tells us that, you know, he's a uh, wiser than Daniel. So. You know, Esau, he actually, he he gets it, you know. But, um, you know, I'm not going to make this, you know, video too long. I just want to go, go into it just as an addition to the previous lesson that I did on Romans 13. So you can, you know, uh, you know, come to your own conclusion. All right. If we write or if, you know, what they're saying is right. You know, because uh, according to um the, the comment, you know, the Sakari also teaches that Romans 13 isn't talking about, you know, submitting yourself or obeying the orders of the higher power, which is, you know, right now is Esau. All right, this B system, you know, we're in captivity, so we're up under him. There's certain things that we have to do in order to uh, be able to live, you know. So uh, anyway, it says uh, at the top, it says, the Christian and government, government's legitimate authority in the Christian's response, in which in order to be a real Christian, you got to be an Israelite, all right, in which, you know, simply, you know, we're followers of the Messiah, we, we're believers of Yahweh Shai, all right, which we're all Israelites, because, you know, to those people is who the words of salvation is sent, all right, and they're the only ones that's going to get uh, delivered. Continuing on, it says, and this is a uh, quote in Romans 13, 1 through 2. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from the Mosai and the authorities that, are, that exist are appointed by the Mosai. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resisteth the ordinance of the Mosai. And, who, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Right? And then I mean, you know, breaks it down, subject to the governing authorities. The connection between Romans 12 and 13 is clear. If the Christian is not to seek personal vengeance, it does not take away the government's authority to punish wrongdoers. You see, basically leave it to the authorities if somebody do something wicked or evil. It says every soul. This certainly includes Christians. Paul simply says that we should be subject to the governing authorities. This was in contrast to groups of zealous Jews in that day who recognized no king but the Most High and paid taxes to no one but the Most High. And that's those, uh, you know, the Sakari and those different other zeal uh, zealot uh, factions. All right. 
they figure, no, we only serve the most high. We don't we don't acknowledge you. All right. As as, you know, uh, authorities over us. OK. But they were going off. And that's why they all scattered. They all, you know, the uh, the Lord had it to where their leaders got put to death and, and, the, and their followers were all scattered. Judas and, 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 and Thutis. And you also had another one. You know, he was a, a what they would call a, an extremist, a radical, a cult leader. And he was based in Egypt. And he tried to uh, lead a rebellion you know, up in the, into Jerusalem, you know, and, and, and he ended up, uh, scattering, man. And they, and, and when, um, when they locked up Paul, they asked him, are you, are you that, that e Egyptian, you know, that tried to, you know, stir up that, that, that sedition, you know, they, and they basically, they called him a terrorist. All right. Fact, let me, let me see if I can, um, go to that account. I think that's an X. I think it's in Acts the twenty first chapter. Now I, I remember doing a, a a lesson on it before. So you had a bunch of Jakes, militant Jakes, that followed this guy, only to you know get scattered. Let me see. Uh... There we go. This is uh, Acts 21 and 37. It says, and as Paul was to be led into the council, he said unto the chief captain, may I speak unto thee, who said, canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar and lead us out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? You see, so they, they had him confused with, with, with another guy. All right. He was trying to rebel against the authorities. Let me uh, real quick. Yep. Uh, the NLT, it says, aren't you the Egyptian who led a rebellion some time ago and took 4,000 members of the assassins out into the desert? Um, NIV, aren't you the Egyptian who started a revolt and led 4,000 terrorists? out into the wilderness some some time ago so they were calling those men uh terrorists so hey it's nothing new under the sun those of you jakes that's mounting up and and you know you think you're gonna go out there and do something he's all gonna he, he'd be quick to call you a terrorist now you got edomites that are coming out you know i'm pretty sure y'all saw that footage but that one edomite who said uh now now i know what it feels like to be uh to well he didn't say he knows what it feels like to be black but he understands what it's like to be called a terrorist because of you know uh the the, the color of your skin basically you know because they're being labeled you know radical extremists and terrorist groups you know for arming themselves and being a part of a a, a, a group that have a belief that goes against you know the status quo so to speak you know, the, the 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 globalist, you know, liberal, you know, democratic side or whatever. So they're being called terrorists, and we've been called terrorists for the longest. You see, even though that Edomite was out of his damn mind to compare us, because he ain't they ain't went through nothing yet. But they are being called terrorists, like normally we're we're being called terrorists. You know. So anyway, and this was what Paul had to deal with just for being a preacher of Yahweh Shai. All right. So let's go back. And it says uh, right here, it says, but there is no authority except from the Mosai and the authorities that exist are appointed by the Mosai. We, we subject ourselves to governing authorities because they are appointed by the Most High and serve a purpose in his plan. All right, everything is according to the will of the Most High. All right. The Lord said he, he, he sets up and he, he, he puts down. 
all right? Promotion cometh not uh, from the east nor uh, the west, but the Lord, you know, put him down and, and set him up another, all right? To fulfill his purpose. Right now, the, the beast is in power because the Lord prophesied through uh, John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos that that beast will come back in their time and they will rule for a certain season. They will deceive the planet Earth. The whole world will see the power of this beast and they will wander after it. The whole world will be under uh, gross darkness because of it. They would, they would, um, you know, have that respect. You know, who, 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 who can make war with this beast? And all these things has uh, played out. They prevailed over us. They uh, enslaved us, used us to build up their kingdom. All right, they oppressed us, kept us on the bottom. And, and why did that happen? Because we moved the Lord to wrath. That's why we were sold unto them. But anyway, let's keep going. It says, no authority except from the Most High. The Most High appoints a nation's leaders, but not always to bless the people. Sometimes it is to judge the people or to ripen the nation for judgment. And that's exactly what uh, Esau is doing. Only he, only he who now let will let until it be taken out of the way. Basically, Esau's wickedness got to pile up. So that's another uh, reason why the Lord got Esau on, on top. He's getting them ripened for judgment. Was that uh, Joel uh, 3 and 13? And it says, put you in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down for the press is full. The fats overflow for the wickedness is great. All right, and, and, and you know, Esau, he's, he's ripened. He's, he's, he's ready to get threshed. Because hey, his, his wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Basically, his sins are, are, are reaching unto heaven. You see? And the Lord allowed this devil to, to, to pile upon himself all his wickedness so that the man of sin, the son of perdition, can be revealed in these last days. And the Lord raised up servants and, and prophets to, 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 to expose them and, and prophesy against him. And that's what the Lord does before he brings down a, a, a kingdom or an empire. You see? So uh, going, going further on, it says, we remember that Paul wrote this during the reign of the Roman Empire. It was no democracy. And no special friend to Christians or, or uh, followers of, of Hamashiach. Yet he still saw their legitimate authority. You know? And yet, hey, Yahweh Shai, he did. He, he saw their authority. That's why he told them to, you know, render to Caesar what is Caesar's, man. Pay your taxes. It says, your, your savior suffered under Pontius Pilate, one of the worst Roman governors Judea ever had. And Paul under Nero, the worst Roman emperor, and neither our Lord nor his apostle denied or reviled the authority. You see? Therefore, who, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of the Mosai. Since governments have authority from the Mosai, we are bound to obey them unless, of course, and this is what we stress, they order us to do something in contradiction to the Most High's law. Case in point, what um what uh, Nebuchadnezzar tried to do to get uh Daniel to to bow down to to the image of Baal. We're not going to go against uh, the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High. That's obvious. All right, when uh Antiochus tried to get us to sacrifice swine's flesh on the on the altar in the temple, you know he set up the abomination of desolation. There was some that was choosing to die rather than to uh, dishonor the Most High in, in, in their heritage. All right, you had Antipas, you know, he 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 refused to honor, you know, the God of uh, of medicine, and they and they persecuted him and they tortured him, which you know the God of medicine that they served back then, they still honor to this very day in this modern Roman Empire, man. 
the little staff with the with the serpent wrapped around it that goes back to Asclepian or Asclepius. They're trying to tell you to obey their uh, 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 pharmaceuticals, trust the science. You know, that's that's the sorcery of, of, of Esau, man. We're not going to obey that. But you got Israelites that that's obeying that. And in, 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 in the same token, you're militant, you know, you're very radical, but you're going to tell uh, uh, Jake to actually obey a wicked command from, from the devil. Obviously, you, you've been compromised. You didn't sold out. All right. Now you're going off. You can't bring out Romans 13 to say, take the uh, take the damn jab. Because that's a contradicting a contradiction to the most size law. You can't uh, uh, bring out Romans 13 and say, take the chip. Because now you're going against the most size law. Romans, uh, it's like your Leviticus 19, 28. All right. Uh, hey, you breaking several commandments, man. It says, then we are commanded to obey the most high before men, as in Acts 4, 19. It says, uh, those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. The most high uses governing authorities as a check upon man's sinful desires and tendencies. Government can be an effective tool in resisting the effects of man's fallenness. You know, so there's certain laws that Esau does have. Like, you know, if you, you commit death, you know, you they got to, you know, persecute you according to the law. Now, you know, we know a lot of his laws is, you know, Esau goes over the top with it. And some of it is actually wicked. You know, it doesn't actually bring full justice, you know. At the end of the day, you know, Esau, you know, he 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 does his own thing. That's why it says in Psalms 15, 16, unto the wicked, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? That thou shouldest take as my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction and cast of my word behind thee. You know. So, you know, we can expect that Esau is not gonna, you know, uh give you, you know, righteous laws, you know, to the fullest extent. But he does have laws dealing with people, you know, if, if, if you steal, if you commit murder, you know, so on and so forth. All right. So you don't want you don't want to uh, be persecuted by Esau and be thrown under the jail or put to death. Then don't be killing. Don't be out there, uh, uh, you know, murdering. Don't be out there stealing. Don't be out there robbing. Don't be out there selling uh, drugs. Which that's witchcraft. Really, you're supposed to be put to death for that. Esau just lock you up. It says, uh, and he's going into verse three and four. It says, the, the job of government to punish and debtor evildoers. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. Yeah, just do nothing but good. All right, unless you're a nigger. All right. If they persecute you for doing good, then hey, good, hey, that, that's a good thing. That's acceptable with the Most High. Happy are you. It says, for he is the Most High's minister to good for you. The Lord will even make your enemy be at peace with you. It says, uh, and that's what happened when he used uh, 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 Agrippa. You know, for the case of uh, Paul, right? He says, but if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the most High's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Do what is good and you will have praise. Paul's idea is that Christians should be the best citizens of all. Even though they are loyal to the most High before they are loyal to the state, Christians are good citizens because they are honest, Give no trouble to the state, pay their taxes, and most importantly, pray for the state and, and the rulers, which, you know, that's all. We don't pray for the wicked. Okay? But they do see our works, and they see that we're not, you know, really raising any trouble. That's why the police don't really mess with us out there, man. Because we don't give them a reason to. You see? 
And when they do come to us, it might be a misunderstanding or that, you know, it might be some a law that we didn't know about. And they'll just, you know, refresh us about it. And be like, oh, sorry. Sorry about that, sir. You know, we'll we'll move down the street or we'll, you know, we'll we'll wrap up in a, in a minute. And they'll be some most of the time they'd be cool about it. There's been a few times where they were assholes. You know, which, hey, you know, this is, you know, that's Esau. You know, he's an asshole. All right. But we ain't doing nothing to get us locked up. All right. It says he is the most size minister. Paul describes government officials as the most size minister. They have a ministry in the plan and administration of the most side, just as much as church leaders do. All right. So, you know, he's kind of going a little left with it now. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, for the most part, this is on point. All right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll read this one, and, it, and I'm going to close out with this, is uh, jump it down to uh, 5 through 7, verse 5 through 7. Uh, Therefore, you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscious sake, for this, of this, because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are the most wise ministers attending continually to this very thing, render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Therefore, you must be subject, we must be subject to government, not only because we fear punishment, because we know it is right before the Most High to do so. For conscience sake, Christian obedience to the state is never blind, it obeys with the eyes of conscience wide open. You also pay taxes, render therefore to all their due we are also to pay the taxes due from us because there is a sense in which we support the most high's work when we do so by implication romans 13 and 6 also says that the taxes collected are to be used by government to get the job done of restraining evil and keeping an orderly society not to enrich the, the government officials themselves which you know today you know they don't do that they take that tax money and they they you know fuel it towards their wicked agendas man you know make more uh weapons you know to, to to go and oppress and destroy another uh country you know they get send it to the queen of england and all, all type of madness man so really it's just another form of oppression all right but anyway um so you get the gist of it man so Romans 13 is not, it, it does not uh, give you a justification to go out there and, and uh, you know, try to play militant, try to play revolutionary. All right. This is, this is Esau's world, but hey, the Lord is going to bring his world to an end. All right. The, all, the, our only fulfillment in that is speaking it to existence, bringing them down spiritually by the word of the Most High. All right, consuming them by the spirit of the Lord's mouth. That's our only role in bringing this man down. The Lord's going to do the rest for us, man. And then, of course, the Lord's going to give us power, and he's going to make us battle acts and weapons of war. But that's when the Lord comes back. See? So anyway, you know, I didn't want to, you know, make this a long video. I think I, you know, got to the to the main points. You know, for the most part, you know, this was uh, on point and it backs up what we say. All right. So hopefully this was also edifying. I'm going to give all praises to y'all. Watch me out with Shai. And until the next lesson, Shalom.